let me introduce you uh, for for a second to the audience. So, um, or maybe you should do it by yourself. What about that? I mean, I can tell something about you, but uh, let's let's just start with you, and then we just go on from there. I feel like I'm in this, you know, a group of. Uh, hello, my name is Marina, and I am. Uh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. H, like, uh, where are you from? Where are you born? You're like, it's how not, you? So it's not a nice way of asking the girl this question. No, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. No, the age, you can leave the age away. The, the age doesn't matter. It's just a number, as we all know. So. Well, I'm Marina. I am um, trying to be a professional tennis player. Oh. Uh, Twenty-eight years old from Ukraine. I was born in Odessa um, and uh, currently living in Belgium, playing for Belgium since like five years, I think. Long story how I got there. I'm basically the citizen of the world, I guess, as all the tennis players. And yeah. uh, and I mean, I'm ready for all the questions because <laughs> I have lots Oh, lots of to answer. Yeah, yeah. Before we come to the question, uh, we first start through like, uh, yeah, your childhood, your tennis, how you got into tennis, um, how you moved, like why you moved from Ukraine, how is the tennis in Ukraine. Um, I had Ilya Machenko also already here on the channel and he told me a little bit about the Ukraine Tennis Federation and how stuff goes on there. We just touched that shortly and then, uh, yeah, we just go through what happened in your 28 years um, and mainly in the what let's say 20 when did you start tennis actually 22 years 24 years actually I had a, like a not long time ago I had exactly 20 years of anniversary and I'm playing tennis <laughs> okay so you started like with <laughs> six seven eight like yeah it's it's funny because some people were just, like telling asking me if wow like you remember actually the date and I had like my little diary you know like okay. and, uh, writing down things and I just uh, did it on 25th of September when I was eight <laughs> I went wow to... really ah, wow wow I, had... awesome. I mean that's amazing um, I, I would not know like which date I, I start to touch the first time a tennis record but it's it's very interesting uh... it just like, yeah I would I mean most of the most of us we don't know when we started like a date you know? yeah yeah I mean I cannot even tell you the exactly age I mean I would say it was eight nine or something I'm not even sure so um, whatever I mean if you know the year and the date it's pretty impressive and you're probably the first person ever that I that I met that uh, knows exactly the the date uh, and that uh, yeah, in the day where when you started playing playing your first ball. Ah, uh, yeah, we can maybe check the day, you know, and the, the time. <laughs> <laughs> in your diary, in, in your diary, yeah, perfect. So you started in Ukraine. So you said you were born in in Odessa in Ukraine, and then you started playing in tennis in Ukraine, right? Yes, I actually did. Um, my family is quite sporty family. We we love like, I mean, we are like in this world of sport. Um, I started to uh, do gymnastic, you know, like this rhythmic gymnastic when yeah. I was six. So I was doing it for for almost two years and I got quite badly injured. So I couldn't basically do any more gymnastic and even okay. some doctors were telling me that I can't do sport at all. Um, but as I was always doing something, I I was like after my recovery of my back, I had a, like a back problem in that time. Okay. Um, I started to play tennis just just for fun, just like nothing with no any intention, just to do some sport. And the courts were like five minutes walk from my place, so I was doing it like two times a week. Um, and suddenly. I don't know, like I was pretty good from the beginning. I was already playing some tournaments when I was, after one year of playing. Um, and I was doing let, lots like extra. My coach really liked me and she was always leaving, like I could stay for another practice after my practice. Okay. And then another, another, so basically I was just living on the, in the tennis club on the courts. Very nice. And so this, I was just playing and Mm, I, I got to the competition very quickly and so and then like I was quite good in all the ages under 12 14 starting to play after like um, I, I skipped to under eight, uh, 16 so I played uh, juniors after but basically I got to the how, how why I moved from Ukraine because I basically got to the wall where 
there was a moment, okay, what to do, like where, how can I improve more? Obviously me, I didn't think about it. Like I was just, I saw the ball, I hit the ball. That's it. it was more my parents. Okay. Uh, I was very lucky that they were supporting me through all my career. And basically in the, in the such an early age, they were always, you know, putting me, helping me yeah. at the time, putting some pressure, but also helping me. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah, like we know in the bigger tournaments under 14, I've met some uh, agent uh, and, uh, you know, so I, I was working with him and he was just telling me after like, okay, where is better to go, what, what good to try. Um, and I went to first uh, destination was Germany, actually. Really? Uh, I didn't yeah. even know. I didn't even know. You didn't know? Yeah, no. I was German for eight months. Where? I have no idea what. It was in it was in Saarbrücken. Saarbrücken. Saarbrücken, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> so it was a, it was just um, you know it was basically not the academy, it was just a private um, tennis club. But I specifically I went to one of the coach. He was Russian, uh, and he was there. So I was there for um, like nine months. I was with my mom, and sometimes alone. So like this and then uh, after Germany I went to America mm -hmm. I was um, in San Antonio in, t in uh, Academy of Roddick now it's not anymore but I guess it, like it used to be okay. I was there for another like eight nine months plus you know traveling playing the tournaments I start to play juniors already in that time it was like 13 so I, I was I didn't decide anything, you know, in that age, you just follow what people tell you around. So sure. that's how I was there and then there. And then I just, I could only say like, yeah, I like, or no, I don't like, even maybe this I couldn't say. <laughs> My, yeah, probably yeah. the people around me was like convincing me that yes, you like, okay. <laughs> you need to like. Yeah. And then, um, and then actually how I got to Belgium, because uh, after America, okay, it was the time, you know, some reasons to, to, to change because the idea, the, the way they practice there, it's more on, um, it, at least in, in that time, there was lots of like quantity. I mean, we were just dying on course, like hours and hours, eight, nine hours a day. I was like eating this tennis way too much. And I was losing a bit, I mean, there was obviously no quality when it's that much of sure. tennis. In one moment you just play, play, but you don't understand what are you working on, what is your goal, what is your objective, you know. So then I, we changed, uh, we started to look for another place. Mm -hmm. We, it's my parents, me, <laughs> and my agent and that. Uh, and so it was um, a new academy in Justine and Yin. Okay. Um, and so it was like a proposition that I could go there. In the beginning, it was very tough to get there. You needed to go through the test week. It was like, now it's a bit, you know, anyone who wants to go, who, who is willing to pay, just do it. But in back to that time, it was uh, not so many players there. Okay. It was a very, like, full quality and uh, and I mean I also had the chance to you know to have a conversation with Justine to have some um, experience from her from Carlos uh, Rodriguez her ex-coach so it was a good um, a good to good, uh, good decision to go there so basically this is how I got to Belgium I was uh, 14 I was 14, yeah, and so from that time, <laughs> I'm still in Belgium. <laughs> um, yeah, I have to watch out uh, of what I'm saying. <laughs> what I, I wanted to say something, but then I'm like, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> no, like whatever you want to say, say, and if you if you feel like not saying it, it's all good. So no, no, all, all good. No, no, I mean it's just that um, you know I'm basically half of my life and I'm in Belgium. I have a Belgian nationality. I play for Belgium. I basically live here. I, I, I my, my, my life is here. But I don't feel till the end 
with Belgium. You know, I will always stay Ukrainian. It's is a quick tour. I'm, I'm I'm still missing lots of stuff from my country. So I think now I'm like kind of have a balance of being Ukrainian still okay. and something getting from Belgium. <laughs> yes, perfect. So Marina, thank you very much for the interview. That was uh, was 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 nice. I'm oh, just kidding, but actually you like you you went through everything already. I, I had like <laughs> I had not much time to ask any questions. So when was the time when you met uh, when you went to Belgium actually? When you were like 15, 16? Uh, 14. 14. Okay. So after the U.S. trip, you went there to Belgium, and then being since then there. Um, what about your parents? Did they travel like to what do you say to Germany to Saarbrücken or to the States, or did they just send you over there and and um, visited you? My mom, she was with me most of the time. She, I mean, I was a kid, so she didn't want to let me go. And I mean, that's good and normal. Um, I started to be more like alone, living alone and basically to understand what is to live yeah. without parents. Uh, when I was 17, sometimes some, some weeks I was without her, but I would say from 17, I started to be more like for myself. And then she was times, but, and the yeah, they in Ukraine, um, I have a very like close relationship with them. So we, before Corona, we were trying to see each other very often. They were coming to some tournaments or just in Belgium, so. Sure, sure, sure. One very, very important or what interesting question for me is how how you actually got to tennis um, because I'm I'm really always uh, just for my interest I'm interested in how you really got to tennis. Was it like your parents? Was it like a teacher? Like did someone from the school tell you to tennis is a cool sport? Because that's very interesting for me how to, how how kids get into the sport. So how how did how did that happen in, in Ukraine that day on the twenty whatever September? <laughs> <laughs> And um, nobody uh, played tennis in our family. We didn't even, yeah, we didn't even know anything about this sport. It was not something like, oh yeah, tennis, let's do it. Okay. Um, I would say it was just um, my, uh, the tennis club was next to our uh, to house, I mean, okay. apartment. So, okay. We had one friend who were one girl who played tennis. She recommend that coach just to do some sport. I don't know. And then like, I mean, I was in gymnastic. I did ballet. I was completely. <laughs> I did uh, two different gymnastic rhythmic and sport, sportif. So I was like, kind of looking what I like. Okay. Um, there was no really any specific uh, reason why tennis it just just happened like this. It's just that I actually started to be good very early. Um, and that helped and probably. Just like I spent lots of hours on court, and then I think uh, after one year of playing tennis, I got this first competition, and then I got it was actually in Romania. Oh wow! And I have this still like trophy and I remember the moment when I got it was a third place and when I I got this received this trophy I was like hmm I want more I just remembered this moment like oh I want more okay this feels <laughs> so, good to, to get a trophy and to be part of the like, tournament okay, what, what what should I do you yeah. know for, for getting more and be, getting like first place yeah um, and but yeah no 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 really reasons why tennis yeah, that's very interesting. And if there's anyone listening here now uh, and you do any tournaments around the world, even if it's just a club tournament, get these trophies, get these medals, get something for the kids. They it doesn't matter if it's a third place or a fifth place. They're happy and they say, oh, wow, OK, I, I achieved something. And then they yeah. want they want to have more. And uh, that's 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 even even more important than, than a lot of other stuff at a tournament. Get them some trophies, these kids, and, and they, they're happy and they get these exactly these thoughts what you have like night was nice but i want to also maybe get the first place one day so and then yeah. they, they try to uh, improve for sure okay cool so then you you went up and then as you said like i mean i i assume you were already pretty tall when you were smaller because right now how tall are you you one of the taller girls on two i would say uh, 176 okay like 176 yeah one 180 is kind of 
already very big on the on a on a tour. I mean, the, the top girls there are some tall ones, but I would say definitely one seventy. Like, this is okay because I still can wear high heels when I'm going. <laughs> exactly. So that, I'm not... That's that's good. That's a that's a good a good thing. It's exactly. Important. Yeah. And then you you were quite successful in the in the junior um, years. Uh, I I uh, saw that you uh, won actually two double um, championships, uh, Grand Slams when you were juniors. I just thought it was one, but you won uh, 2009 the U.S. Open, right? And then 11 the French Open. So two years later. Yeah. So 2009, how old were you when you won the first uh, doubles uh, Grand Slam? The 16, I think. Okay, and then with 18 the French in your last year. Actually, no, I was 15, 15 and 16. Um, I I stopped uh, playing juniors very early. Okay. Which is uh, back to the time I think it was um, still a mistake. I think if you if you can play juniors Grand Slams until like as maximum as you can, I think you 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 should. Okay. Be I mean, because it's like it's quite amazing experience to play. To be around all those um, big players, you know, you you kind of start to to feel this atmosphere of a yeah. real tennis, you know. So, but I think I stopped earlier because I was working with uh, one Ukrainian sponsor, and he wanted me to get uh, to the pro Even tour pro soon. Yeah. So yeah, um, but finish at 16, I think. Was it was it hard to change from the junior tour to the pro tour at that time? Like, of course, you started in the lowest uh, ranking tournaments, the 10K probably at that time, the $10,000 uh, prize money tournaments. Was it a big difference to start over there? Um, or how, how did you felt? For me, um, right now, if I'm looking back to that, it was quick for me personally. Okay. Um, I didn't, I don't remember that I was suffering of how, where can I get my first points, how to appear in the ranking. I never had this because basically one of my first 10, 10k I played, it was in Brussels and I won from qualification, I think. Okay. And then, um, and then like, I was still mixing it with juniors. Uh, but I had this, I don't know, I feel like I got into the top 200 quickly. I know it's not the story of everyone, there is different. Someone is struggling in the beginning, then going boom. Someone is straight winning a Grand Slam, you know? <laughs> like, there are some, yeah, I, I heard I heard some stories the last couple of years that young girls uh, just played the slam and said, hey, here I am, let's, let's gonna go for the quarter semis or even win it, so. Yeah. Uh, right now, things are going crazy, yeah. You can uh, expect something from juniors. I don't know, they're not afraid of anything. They just go and smack the wall, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I didn't do anything like huge and crazy, but I was very consistent in my in my way and got into it quite fast, into like 300, 200. So you see, I even cannot tell you anything that I was like, something was tough, which is, which is like <laughs> maybe wrong to say because I know you know, it's for everyone is a different way, but I don't know, I kind of had the maybe level of going through this first stage quicker and then and then I stopped. <laughs> oh, stopped, stopped uh, getting better, stopped like you, you couldn't, you couldn't make it into like a deeper way of like 150 or even top 100. Uh, as I said uh, in my stories also, like uh, you're 101, how does it feel actually to be 101 in the world? <laughs> Like having the dream of being top 100 and everyone is like top 100 is the thing that you need to, to get and need to reach. Um, that's your uh, highest rank and this is actually today, right? Like, yeah. All, like yeah, so uh, like give me your, your thoughts on it or is it not a big, huge thing for you? Uh, no, no, because this is the thing. It's it's a huge thing if you're in top 100 because this is the thing. 101 and 99 is just a number which is wherever really. It doesn't... It's only a number, but it just for because people are talking about it and saying like top hundred is the you know it's 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 a dream of every tennis player, and it is for me as well. Um, but there was like a mo you know in the beginning of the year when I was uh, basically 270 I think like yeah last exactly a year ago like 270 
um, and then thinking that now I'm like going closer to the top hundred, I would never think about the the number, the ranking. After making a good making a good season, good summer, uh, I start like when I was after I think winning this WTA, I became what 115, something like this. I remember, yeah. and I was like, I was like oh, yeah, it's it's it's. It's actually close now. You know, you don't think about it when you are like 200, 100. It's like such a long way. Lots of you sure. need to play. Like you need lots of points. Um, and now uh, after this, um, after after July, after summer, people were like, you know, talking, talking, and me, I, I'm just closing my ears for that, you know. Sure. And, uh, I want to keep going on um, improving because this is the mindset I got that if I'm working on my mindset, my tennis, that I want just to get better every single day. And this is only goal I have and only expectations for, from myself is to give my best on every day, you know. This mindset was there and it helped me to get to this ranking. And then I don't want to change it, you know. Even thought there is always a second voice of like, mm, ranking, <laughs> here. Sure. But, uh, but I still didn't make it, you know. <laughs> oh, like... And okay, like in one in one um, side, you if you are top hundred, you can say, I made it. Yes, I was there, you know. But at the same time. I don't want just to be there like this for a few days, for one week and then out, you know. You want to stay there, you want to improve. You, don't, I don't want to put any limit of this number of hundred, you know, because you never know where you can go. That's so. that's that's so true. Yeah, and the same the same thing. That's that's what I always tell also to the juniors. Uh, it's it's exactly what you said. I mean, that's just uh, you have to, to to put that in a frame and just put it on every uh, at every uh, home where tennis parents are and kids are just getting better every day and just working on your skills and then start improving every day just a little bit. It's uh, it's the most important and not about watching the ranking and how like the other person like your your um, training partner won a tournament and then you're like oh, okay i need to play like two more tournaments to close up there i mean that will probably guide you uh, at the end of the day not on the right path so very well said and very very good when you grew up marina i got a question from uh, a viewer um did you have any role model when you grew up was there someone in ukraine or even around the world that you looked up to what was the first person that you could Im could remember um i never had um, my idol yeah, I don't want to sound arrogant, <laughs> but I really never, uh, never had. The only thing I was trying maybe to take something from the player, what, uh, what would help me to improve, or I would say like, I would love to have this from this player and this from that player. And for me, it was like Sharapova. For me, it was always the the. The player who I really like admired in in a like in the mental side, you know, yeah. such a um, such a fighter, such a mindset. Um, I always wanted to to take this from her, no matter what she's fighting until the end. She she also could um, handle the lo the losing matches as a champion, you know, like sure. it was a. I really like this in her. I like the I like this style of game of Azarenka. I mean, I still do. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would say. I mean, I always liked Kim Kleisters. Her, it's fun to. It was fun to watch her. I mean, it is. She's came. She came back. <laughs> so she's playing in Indian Wells now, right? She's she got a wild card again. She's playing again. So she played last uh, like two weeks ago. Also had a close, like a three-setter. So mm -hmm. interesting. I mean, she's unbelievable talented. Like, doesn't matter if she doesn't play when she goes back. She just smacked that ball so nicely. Can you imagine playing like over over the age of forty years, right now? Like, you, could you imagine doing it? If you bought, <laughs> if you bought. <laughs> I was like, 
No, just joking. You know, my boyfriend is in like in another room, so I'm like he probably hears what I'm gonna answer. <laughs> no, just um, for you. Like, could you imagine? No, like... uh, no, I don't. Okay. But um, I ten years ago I thought I'm gonna finish very early, like okay. before 25. I don't know. I had this. I don't know why. Seriously, don't know why. Okay, but. Uh, it's a uh, right now, like a few years ago. I mean, two years ago, I thought I'm gonna. I was giving myself a limit till 28. Okay. Mm, and I feel like the last two years, I started after after uh, Corona. Yeah. After all this down, lots of things changed in my mind, and I really started to love to play tennis. If it sounds maybe a bit weird, but like I really do love this game, uh, and before I didn't, <laughs> and uh, and with this way, yes, you never know how long you can play. You know, I think it, as long as I want and as long as um, my body allows me, then we will see. But I don't think for we'll we'll talk <laughs> talk to you in ten years. <laughs> Exactly, when you say, yeah, I thought I would stop like when I was 33 and then now I'm here in top 100 and I'm playing the season of my life and yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, I mean, this year was very a very good season for you. You, you made, like, as you said, like your first WTA final that you that you won there and it was in Poland, right? Um, the tournament and uh, yeah, take, take us on that ride. I mean, you've been so long for, on the tour. You, of course, you won like some bigger ITF tournaments already. Uh, also in doubles and singles, um, what was like? What was it like to win like the first WTA? Because that's kind of also a milestone in every every career career to win one of these uh, bigger tournaments. I think it was not really um, some miracle or just like oh the week the week of like a lucky week or because um, I felt that with. This year, lately, every every week, I feel that I'm on a good way. I'm on the right in the right process of uh, improving my mindset, my my, my game, um, and uh, just I think like the few just few weeks before uh, Poland, I played um, in Amstelveen. Um, it was 60k, I think. Um, and I lost uh, to Kadantu. Now she's uh, ignited. Uh, Kadantu, I lost like 7 5 in the third, I think. Mm -hmm. mm, you know, second round maybe of, of ITF. And then you would usually you would think, like, I mean, if you're losing in ITF, you don't basically you don't have a chance on the bigger tournaments. You know, yeah. you, at least you need to win these tournaments, then you. Like usually people, you know, would think like this. But I remember I, I had a conversation with my coach. I was there alone and then I came back home and I was like, look, I feel that I'm, and that's what I was telling him. I feel that um, I'm in a good way. I feel that something is going, it, something good might happen mm -hmm. um, in the next few weeks, months. I don't know when, but I feel that uh, it, it's going well. Like. In my mindset, I know that what I'm doing in my game, I know what I'm doing. It's just a question of being patient and just uh, just wait for this chance. Mm, and then I went to this uh, Lausanne mm -hmm. and I had the first round, uh, it's WTA, first round against Stageman. And she was like a third seed, I mean, great player, you know, and at home. And again, People like, oh, is how you play against her? Like, um, that tough draw, bad luck. Like, um. and I took it like, no, but that's good. Like, if I want to be good, I need to beat those players. Sure, 100%. So, with Definitely. mind of mindset, I went to play against her to beat her. Um, and then, you know, this win gave me some confidence. And then, you know, like, little by little, I was playing. I got just into this rhythm of, Okay, another match. Okay, another one. And so, like, already Lausanne was... I was going in the right direction and then arriving to... But I was actually, you know, I was even doubting about going to Poland. Oh, really? 
because um, in the in the week of um, Lausanne, the day I woke, uh, the day my uh, of my semi final, I woke up and I I couldn't turn my neck, so I was completely blocked, so I couldn't hit my backhand. I was quite like I was crying because it was like oh no my first semi final and I'm. I, I just cannot, like, it's terrible, you know, so you are really limited in your shots. My serve back and couldn't. In the end, okay, I, I made it somehow, mm, and um, I had another injuries, and the physio from the tournament was like, so what are you doing? You're going back home, rest? I'm like, no, no, I'm going to Poland, and, you know, like, is it good? Like, you cannot barely walk, you know, like, a turn, nothing. But because I played in Lausanne uh, semi-final, I got this special exam for next week. Yeah, yeah. And, but I was fighting for this special exam like so hardly. Like now it's so tough to play any main draw tournaments uh, of WT. So and here I am. So yeah, I'm going to use my chance. And again, I called my coach and I was like, look, I'm going there. I don't know what will happen. I might not be able to walk, but I want to give it a try because I deserve that main draw spot. Just, to, just, like, oh. just give me a second. Just interrupt you here in a second to to take uh, to take all the people that are listening uh, with us um, that don't understand this special exam rule in tennis. Uh, it's the rule if you're into uh, into tournaments and you enter the tournaments, you have to decide whether you play the tournament or not. And if you're in quali in qualification for the next week. You have to normally play the qualification at that tournament. That's tournament that what uh, Marina just says is the tournament in Poland. She was in qualification and qualification. And now after Corona, the tournaments, they got so tough. And as she said, it was so hard to get into the main draw. There's a rule if you make um, if you make it that far the week before the tournament, if you make it that far that you cannot play the quali. So you're still in the in the in the tournament and you cannot be at the same time in the other uh, city and play the qualies there which is in that case the semi-finals because she has to play the semi-finals on what was it on uh, on saturday right yeah and then the qualies and, and the qualies also yeah. starts saturday in poland then there is a called special exam so it's an se um sh the short form is se and that allows you to to finish the tournament there play the semi-finals play the finals if you win and after that you'd get the direct acceptance into the main draw of the next tournament and that's actually what what she just refers to that she really wanted to use the chance because it doesn't happen often that a, that a person from the qualies makes it to the semi sort of the final and then get a special exam someone else it's very rare and then of course i can 100 percent understand that you want to yeah. of course take the money take the chance and and go there okay yeah. so now you can continue so um and so i arrived to Poland, like you know have have broken um and it, there was another story the same i went to physio treatment uh, to do my treatment and there was like basically i hit my head against one let's say wall but i didn't see it, so i hit it i mean i don't know how it happened just it happened and then like i had like such a big uh, bruise and it was big and they took me to a doctor for like an hour to make sure that I'm fine. I did all okay. the tests. So my beginning of my tournament started like completely like... Weird, like long. <laughs> <laughs> Almost in hospital. And then, yeah, if someone would tell me, it's okay, you, you're gonna win a tournament, I would be like, you out of your mind or what? But in, the only thing I knew that I was confident about it's in my in my head i was so so like mm, good and calm and knowing what i'm gonna do every single point like yeah i was just in in a good mindset and then i just played match by match really i didn't think further i was going day by day nice. and and it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, mean, I, I saw I saw well. the I saw the run and I was like, yeah, yeah, and I was always sexing you as well. So going back also like some years before that final just or that that the trophy that you won just some months ago. Uh, I met Marina, I would say it was 2000 uh, what was it? 16 maybe. 16, 17 Wimbledon um, where I was with Yannick and Paula and then we shared kind of an Airbnb apartment. That's that's how we <laughs> 
first time met and uh, then I said, okay, this is a girl I can also use for my team. So then I brought her to my team in, in Cologne that she played uh, German Bundesliga in my team. That's how we connected, actually. And um, we had a contract this year, pretty flexible. So I said, hey, Marina, I need you here and there. And she said, yeah, but with Corona, I also want to play some tournaments. And as I'm, a, of course, a tour coach, I understood. I said, yeah, okay, just let me know. And if you can make it somehow, it's good. And then Marina comes up telling me, Hey Yannick, yeah, like next next week is good. I, I can play. I think uh, I'm I'm playing a WTA tournament, but uh, if I'm out, I definitely can play. Or I, I play a huge uh, ITF tournament, and if I'm not playing on Sunday, uh, I can play for the team matches. I said, yeah, good, okay, it's good. Um, I'm setting everything up, and you don't expect like the players always to make it to uh, to the later stages. And then I was looking, okay, Tuesday, ah, oh, Marina won, good, well, well, well done, first match you're done. <laughs> And then Wednesday, oh, ne nice, next one done. And then after Thursday, and then I was like, okay, she won again. I was like, okay, this is quarterfinals now. The match is in two days. I need to have a plan B. I mean, I had it already, but... Um, and then I, I was like, okay, yeah, of course, I'm always for the player. And I know they work so hard their entire career. So I was not even thinking one second of telling her, hey, we really need you. Please, uh, <laughs> like, come to the club matches. Doesn't matter the tournament. So I was just uh, taking taking care and also, like, looking live scores and saying, oh, and... Second set, okay, she looks like she's winning again. So I was very happy. I, and in the meantime, for the match day, then we didn't have you. And then, of course, it was tougher for us, um, especially also in this season now with the first Bundesliga, which was tough enough. But uh, that was... Uh, you actually, you wanted to play, I think, three ma three matches. In the end, uh, you played, like, in the two two tournaments, like, just too good. And then it was just one match, which was... No, it was two, right? You played two. No, I played two, yeah. Yeah, which were both amazing. And, and I was I saw you and I was like, wow, something happened there. I mean, I, I could see, like, she was smacking asses there in the in the, in the the league matches. And I was like, okay. The yeah, same, I played really good. It's the same, what do, you, what do you tell me, like, now? Uh, that you feel that you feel there's something changed and you have the passion and you just... Uh, you know what to do. That's that's how how I saw you also on the court. How determined you you went there, and I had not no doubt about that you're gonna win that th these matches. So it was very very impressive. To just give a short uh, insight on, on on how how we actually met like some some years before in uh, in, in Wimbledon and sharing sharing uh, an, a house together. To uh, yeah, we went even to a players party. That's true. Uh, we not talk about that. <laughs> I mean, there's well, not, nothing, nothing bad. Like, I mean, nothing bad happened there. Don't get me wrong here. No, but nothing bad. It's just like to get to those parties, you need to be on the Grand Slam main draw. So yeah. that was a good. That's true. That's true. That's true. And it, these players' parties, of course, all the players get there. Like some officials get there. You have some drinks, and then uh, it's not like a completely party party. <laughs> Everyone get fucked up. And... <laughs> Boring. It's just fancy, but boring. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, maybe probably some of them do, but but we we didn't. We went home like all good, and uh, there was uh, for me actually the first time that I've been to a slam, um, to a Grand Slam like players party. I mean, on the WTA tournaments, ATP tournaments, you sometimes you you, you go there, but uh, AT, to the to the Grand Slam players party, I've never been so far. But coming back to you because you are uh, the, the the guest in here. I have a question for you about dubs because you played such a good uh, doubles um, when you were juniors. Now you also play sometimes doubles. Of course, the single players, they always have to think, okay, should they play both? Because it's very exhausting. It can be very exhausting playing two matches a day, especially when, the, for example, the weather does not fit perfect. It starts raining, then you're sitting there the whole day <laughs> waiting for a doubles and the next day you have a match. Um, do you prefer to play singles or doubles? Do you have passion for both? And, and how do you work out like which tournaments you play doubles and which you don't? Right now, I'm not planning uh, playing doubles, um, and I'm not playing in not planning in the near future. I decided that uh, now I go more for singles. Okay. Mm, it just uh, was the reason, yeah, as you said, uh, physically it's getting tougher, um, and uh, sometimes, yeah, with those uh, raining delay, like basically when you finish a single match, I. W Personally, me, I would like just to put a time for recovery to prepare for my next single match. Okay. Uh, but this is for the moment. We will see. Maybe things will change. Because personally, me, I love doubles. Really. Yeah. That's what that's what and my I impression also was. I mean, that's that's what I would say. Yeah. And probably in, in the Grand Slams, that what what you see also on the tour in the Grand Slams also. I mean, you would probably also think of playing uh, the Slam doubles if you if you would get in because of course it's. Uh, it's a chance of making a lot of money, and and in the slams, it's just a different story. You have like one more, one day more of a 
uh, like a break, you don't play every day, so um, yeah, people also like to play the slam doubles and I'm not sure if you would do it, but uh, I could definitely imagine. No, I mean, before this I would do also a winning match in doubles, it's still a winning match, you know, it's 100%. still playing, uh, amazing um, feelings, you know. I used to play doubles, first of all, because as a, I prefer to play doubles instead of practice, because yeah. it's a it's a real practice. Yeah. You work on your returns, on your serve, on your volleys. I feel that when I play doubles, I'm much more confident in my volley, uh, even at the in my single. It's an extra money, uh, always, and uh, I would say that it's it's more fun. You know, I'm taking it. And when I lose doubles, okay, I can be sad, but uh, you know, I don't take. It doesn't hurt so much. Yeah, um, unless it's some very like the big match yeah. uh, so you I'm, I'm like enjoying it more and I was always trying to play doubles with some of my friends um, and it's more fun it's you you share you share the game you share the fun it, it I'm, I'm I don't remember like that I've been all only serious on doubles I think I never played the match just serious like in doubles yeah yeah I know what you mean I know what you mean um, but coming coming to the like emotions after winning and emotions after losing, what is what, what did you like? What, which way did you find um, after losing matches? What did you what do you do after losing a match to to just yeah? I mean, it's sometimes tough losing two, three, four times first round. Like, well, how do you how do you deal with it? And what what advice can you give for for like, also young players how how they should mm -hmm. deal with it? You know, actually, I, I wrote uh, the post uh, on Instagram, like when exactly when I had my 20 years of tennis, I wrote a big post and it was about um, basically the lesson of my tennis life is uh, and I and I really hope that maybe someone can read it and see and take something from it because uh, the um, the way how we handle the losses, you know, you can take it differently. And I'm, I used to, I used to take it very badly. I used to really be like a shame of losing. Um, I was closing myself. I was, I couldn't. I like sometimes I didn't talk to people for a few days. I was like depressed because yeah. the only how I saw losing matches is. It, is a fail. That's it. You lose, it's fail. Yeah. I never was taking the loses as a as a good part of it because it is a good part if you take it right. If you take a lesson from it, yeah. Because at the end, you play a match, you see, you analyze. Okay, you lose, but you still can take some good things, and you can take um, the things what you need to improve, and then you go next day and you work on it. I, I mean, I, I'm happy that I started to do it because then the tennis became much more fun for me. I think this is a big reason why I start to love tennis because every if I'm losing, for me it's not the end of the world anymore. It's just a game. It's just my job. I have to do it. Like it didn't work today. Okay, let's see what what can I do better next time. And I think this is so important for the kids also who are starting playing tennis. Like, it's it's really tough. I can understand that for the kids it's, it is difficult uh, to to be like, oh, I lost. Okay, okay. Like, let's see tomorrow. I work yeah. again. Like, it, I think it's very important the way how the parents are with the kids, how the coaches are, how they the, how they get the the young. Uh, players in 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 their career because um, um, it, it can affect so much you know I, 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 I have seen my statistic right now I'm not I don't remember exactly with the with the numbers but it was like in my career you know I played like 600 matches and uh, on the pro but plus imagine on the 12 14 juniors it's like you know overall matches like and stuff. Yeah, yeah. thousand matches, um, and I saw like I lost uh, uh, like t 
270, something like this. And plus, you know, all juniors and stuff. But like, this is a huge amount of losing matches. It's I was a like, yeah, yeah. a loser a year? A year I've been a loser. Yeah, every, every <laughs> but, day. Yeah. So, but also like, if you play a tournament, yeah, if you if you're a tennis player, you basically lose most of the time every week, and sure. you need to know how to de un unless if you win a tournament. But okay, if we win a tournament, it happens one, two times a season, three. But this is already means a good season. Very good, very good. Season. Um, so it's so important to to learn how to to take the defeats. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, that's that's the, definitely also part of the coaches. That's also my job of uh, getting the kids and also the parents, the, teaching them how to um, put them into the right direction of uh, of taking taking not the loss as as the the, the thing that matters, taking the development mm -hmm. that matters, and and seeing okay what is the practice about. And for example, if the kid needs to surf in volley, just just uh, um, yeah. as as a, as a as a thing, then just then just um, um, see him playing the match, and if he does surf, surf and volley, and he loses love and love or one and love, say yes, it's good. You're on the right track. You need to do it. It's a good thing. Keep doing it. If he if, he if he's not doing surf and volley at all, and he's winning the match, me as a coach, I'm not happy. I'm saying, hey, bro, we are working on something. I mean, if you yeah. don't do it today, like we need to progress. We need to work on it. And uh, even if you lose, and you're gonna lose a lot of matches by uh, by improving and getting better. And that's what we have to start now. So, and this thought is, um, is hard also, of course, to tell the parents, to tell, hey, we're gonna play the next couple of weeks, month, and we probably lose always because maybe we change from double-handed to one-handed or to, to make some different or majority um, changes in, in the game style. And, um, and that's what matters. Yeah. And that's what you just said. Very, very good. Uh, we would. I, I would just start now with some some questions that that reached uh, through Instagram or even here in the chat um, about about uh, yeah that want to ask you something. I mean, there was a question. I was like wondering. Uh, someone asked, "Will you ever create a Twitter account?" I tried. I think I have it. Like in two thousand. I don't know. Sixteen. Okay. Okay. I have but uh, I'm not using it, no. Because, yeah, yesterday when everything was off, suddenly everyone went to Twitter and I was like, maybe I should make it as well. <laughs> I, I want to see. I want to see the, the con, like the, the raid on Twitter's new accounts um, yesterday because I mean the whole world was just uh, was just standing still for like some hours and uh, crazy how how one company can rule the world already that big. Like no Facebook, no Instagram, no TikTok. People were start talking to each other. I mean this is in insane, <laughs> yeah, you know. So yeah, that's uh, very very uh, interesting. Um, do you like football? Was one question here. Are you into soccer? Um, I like um, um, I like football players. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> is your boyfriend I, still? If, is it? <laughs> he's still there. Yeah, but he loves uh, Lewandowski as well. So okay, okay, we're nice, the, nice. We're on the same page, you know. Okay. No, I actually like. I'm not. I'm not that a big fan of football i mean i don't have anything against it but i don't have like a favorite team i'll be like i cannot miss the match okay the only thing i really love to watch is the when the the, the national team's playing yeah. so euro cup world but, cup the big the big yeah, tournaments yeah. it's like i'm actually looking forward every time and i'm just I, I like to watch it. And actually, Belgium is a very good country. I mean, very small, but now recently they build up some very good players, <laughs> and they they are one of the, the the teams to to look out for. I mean, definitely. Um, I mean, I'm like now I'm having you know, a, of course Ukraine. I am cheering up then Belgium um, and Germany um, because my boyfriend is from Germany. So I have like three teams who. But then if. If they play against each other, then I will choose only one team. Okay, so you're not cheering for Netherlands then? Mm, well, sorry, but no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, me neither. No, just asking. Just I mean, Belgium. I mean, Germany, Netherlands. They hate each other in soccer. I'm not sure how it is with Belgium and Netherlands. I can imagine it's slightly the same. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Okay. 
So if you would um, change one thing in your career, looking back, like starting from from the beginning, what what what, what would what would you say you would have better changed? Mm. I think this is what I've just said earlier. It's about this way of how to look at the defeats, uh, because that made the um, it would make my career much more fun, and I would uh, I would be just in less. I would be better as a as a tennis player even now because you know all those days when I was. Uh, after losing matches, I was in in depression. Instead of uh, being of learning something and going and work, I was losing time on it, you know. So I think I because this is what I was also I also wrote in the post that if I could change something, I would change this the way how I would take the defeats um, from early age. It's quite tough because actually I think this thing you learn with the age. 100%. And Definitely. you you when you get more mature you start to understand these 100%. things. When you're a kid you just well you play you lose and okay that's end of the world. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah exactly yeah well, as you said like with the trophies you want to get that first place and you don't understand yeah. that also the path is important and not only like the winning and losing. Yeah. I think yeah, that's that's the biggest one. Um, the rest, it's it's an all beautiful journey. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Beautiful. I have one question. I have I have to ask all my guests because I have a I have a viewer that is always like recently not that often. I don't know where is Franz Alexander, but we had always discussing about topspin volleys, and I'm a big fan of topspin volley, and he's like uh, on the other side of topspin volley. So I always have to ask my guests. That's why we have the deal. What do you think about topspin volleys? And you can just say your honest opinion. Top spin volley. Yes. If I mean, uh, it depends on which zone I, you are. No, no. Like in general, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it like uh, do you use it? Do you use it a lot? Do you use it, do you never use it? Like, um, just your your thoughts on it. I think there's no really like good. Or, it just good or bad. It just you. It's like you good to use it. Use it if it helps you. If it's I use it. I like it. I mean, it's not that I'm using it, but I can, yeah. I mean, it's powerful. It's like okay, you just yes. you just smack that ball and it's <laughs> nice. Okay, so so that's that's a statement. It's like it's it's good. Okay, Alex, you hear that? <laughs> you smack the opponent Sorry. off the court. <laughs> No, 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 all good. No, no, we just because, um, of course, like Topsin Volley, like also with the guys, uh, it's like doubtable. But even now, I see a lot of lot of guys doing it on the tour. Like it doesn't matter which uh, which tournaments they play. Uh, even like Roger, Rafa, Jock, which they all play it, and also like lower ranked players, they do it. And there's some certain situations, as you say, when you cannot like really play a normal volley to, to 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 put it away, and then you just you just get that area around the tee where you just uh, do the swing volley. And, uh, and and use it as a powerful stroke. I would say even that I'm using actually more on my backhand because on the backhand I have less power and sometimes when I really want to to, to finish it, yeah. I am doing it like spin volley. Okay. But for I have more more power even to do this. Do you like to go to the net actually, Marina? Um. <laughs> yes. So so. <laughs> if the opponent um, if the opponent gets the ball back to you, <laughs> then you like it. I yeah <laughs> exactly and um, I know because my pattern of my game is aggressive so the way how I'm building my my tennis it's with idea to finish it at the net yeah so yeah and, and 100% um, one pro player you would uh, you would like to have a dinner with uh, who one what one pro tennis player Oh, Feather! Oh my God! Yeah, he's my, he's a so you're he's a you're a big fanboy of him. Yeah. Did he have? For me, he's he is the he's the only one player on all tour. If uh, he is passing by, like I'm like like I'm I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> so I, good. Uh, Did you have ever a chance to talk to him? 
No. <laughs> because if you would have the chance, no, you, he, you couldn't. Yes, like you have a chance, and if you're, no, because you know you're always crossing each other everywhere sure. and on grand slams. But like, like to talk, what? Like I would feel <laughs> I wouldn't be able to say anything. You know, I'd be like. <laughs> okay. Like, yeah, but interesting. Okay, okay. Yeah, very nice. Very, very fun. So, is there also a girl, that, a girl that you're a fanboy of, or was it? It's just Roger where you like, uh, like being that way. Yeah, just Roger because the girls, what they are, uh, all my opponents. I, I just want to beat them. <laughs> so, but if Serena is in the same locker than you are in the slam, uh, like changing rooms, you're like, it's not, not the biggest of a deal. No, I think when I was younger, yeah, of course you'll be like a bit when I was playing juniors and then I was seeing them. But then really you get to, of course they are more special because they have some history behind. Yeah. Uh, but with years, I start to look at this like, okay, it's it's possi possibly this is my opponent. I have all the respect to every girl who I, I, I play, yeah. but at the same time I want to win, so. 100%, 100%. Um, there was also one question about Oreo or chocolate chip cookies. I don't know who, who that was, but uh, are you are you addicted? Like, are you a little bit addicted of uh, any chocolate-related uh, uh, topic or? Hi, uh, it's like hello. My name is Marina, and I'm a chocolate bully. <laughs> exactly. And then I say, Marina, it's not a problem. We all have our uh, like uh, addiction. Yeah, it is a problem. Don't lie, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So which one? You... Which one do you prefer then? Um, Kinder. Kinder. So not yeah. not Oreo or chocolate chips. Oreo, no. Oreo or chocolate chip cookie cookies. Yes, also. <laughs> No, <laughs> that's the best. Too. That's the best. Mm, yeah, like a little kid. Okay, also. <laughs> oh, I just uh, yeah. I hope my coach doesn't watch it. Okay. okay. Um, there's also yeah, yeah. That, that's definitely yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, what can I say? I mean, I actually don't like that. I I'm not addicted to chocolate, but I have other addictions. But anyway, um, one I just I just popped in a question from Christian. Uh, who are your best friends on tour? Uh, best friends. <laughs> I have to think. No, I don't like. It's not really best friends, but. Uh... Very good friends. No, actually, what I'm saying. Oh my God, she will kill me. <laughs> no, I'm super amazing friends with uh, Paula Kanya, and uh, we're good friends with Laura Pigossi. And oh my God, if I'm gonna miss someone, that will be terrible. With Marina Melnikova, we're good friends. Mm, I would say, like, that's the girls who uh, who I would really take us. Mm, I would go for vacation with, you know. Yeah. yeah. Also, after tennis, that you still stay in contact. You do some private stuff together and, and uh, spend the time. Um, I mean, I used to be, you know, very like we are best friends with Solovieva, yeah. Valeria. I mean, now she's she, she's not playing anymore. She's coaching, so she would be on the top of the list. <laughs> yeah, but if she's coaching, then you see her on tour. I mean, if she's if she's around there, I'm not sure if, she, if she's coaching a girl. I think love. one she will stop, yeah. Say it again, sorry. She will. I think she one day she will be back there somewhere. Yeah. She, she, she will have a player and will play against me. That's terrible. That that happened thing about me that's <laughs> yeah but i mean i mean everyone i i think now in that stage also and then if you're in grand slam stages wta stage there's not much to hide i mean people they scout you they see your uh, matches before and then i think there's yeah. not much not much to hide um so i don't think it's a big big of, biggest of an advantage uh, that's true i agree only, only some like private things that they say. Hey, if you do this, or if you tell her this after the, or before the match, or while a change over, then she completely freaks out. But this is kind of already like uh, dubious. <laughs> so I'm um, not sure if that's the way how to how to win a match. Okay, Marina. One last thing about uh, you telling the kids out there like what should they focus or do if they wanna be a professional as you are right now. What what would you give them as an advice of um, 
yeah, their their career when they're kind of young and um, and they look up and say, oh, Marina, I want to be like her. What do you give them as an advice, as a last word for our stream here? <laughs> Don't be chocolate addicts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I would say, um, I mean, there are lots of things, you know, like it's really tough to choose something exact because tennis is such a puzzle sport that you need to be good in lots of things. Yeah. Uh, but one, um, because one of my coaches, one of them, were always telling me, even if I was in the in the very deep shit, <laughs> he was always telling me like, never forget to dream, you know, like never. Uh, it because I mean it's for free, right? So like, no matter, like you have your goals, you have your dreams. Um, never never really forget about it like really keep this picture uh keep you know to keep working hard towards this because in the end there is a moment for every player to shine there is always a moment for everyone you know it just depends like how patient and strong you will be to get to that point, you know. So you you never know when it will happen, really. Like it can be uh, this year, it can be in uh, 10 years, 15 years, you know, like, but you just need to to remember why you're doing this, for what. So it's more like, um, you know, don't listen to anyone, just, <laughs> just do what you believe in to. And it doesn't matter, you play tennis or you do other things, but stick to your dreams, you know. Yeah, that's a good uh, like a finish finish uh, um, talk from, from uh, Marina Tsanevska. Thank you very much for joining and that uh, we finally could make it after some tries before. Um, obviously, I wish you, of course, all the best for the next uh, weeks. What, what is your next plan for the tournament? Why are you not in Indian uh Wells, actually? I, right now I'm injured, that's okay. why I, yeah, after my last tournament in Karlsruhe, um, it's already three weeks and I'm in the recovering process, so um, hopefully end of October I'm back on court, but uh, I still don't know really the, the plans, I'm just entering every week um, and then as soon as I know that I can play 100% I go. Perfect, that sounds good, I hope you can stick to uh, to how you stopped the last couple of tournaments and uh, we'll definitely keep in touch uh, also for next year's Bundesliga and about tournaments and about everything so definitely uh, thanks again Marina for setting it up and uh, thank you to your boyfriend for helping you out with the technical issues at the beginning but uh, that's that's how it is again uh, guys if you uh, have any more questions then uh, you can you can leave it here in the chat I'll, I'll maybe I can answer one or the other um, and in the meantime I wish you yeah, a great evening a good time Marina take care and uh, see you soon hopefully say hello to to to, to, to the one next door <laughs> take care bye thank ciao, ciao. you ciao ciao